Hi, welcome to another episode of Peak Human Labs with me, Dr. Sanjeev Goyal. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an MD focused on longevity and precision medicine. And the mission of this podcast is to bring you relevant, useful information to help you live at your peak physically, mentally, and spiritually. And today, we're going to be tackling a big topic, one that is part of my medical practice, is the number one question I get from my patients. And it's on the value of using testosterone replacement therapy for males starting in their 40s and beyond. So currently, we are witnessing an unprecedented era in the study of testosterone. In the last year or so, we have seen the release of the most extensive randomized placebo-controlled study to date, examining the effects of testosterone on cardiovascular and prostate health. The initial impetus for this research stemmed from concerns over cardiovascular health. Prior to 2010, existing research hinted at testosterone's potential to guard against cardiovascular disease without indicating a heightened risk for cardiovascular incidents. But as part of my medical education, we were always taught that being a male conferred a heightened risk of a heart attack compared to a female by about 10 years. It was thought either that testosterone was giving this added risk or perhaps estrogen in females was providing a protective effect. And then, between 2010 and 2014, four studies emerged suggesting a possible increase in cardiovascular event risk. And these studies, however, had significant limitations, including a lack of randomizations and placebo controls. Nevertheless, in September 2014, the FDA expressed its intention to delve deeper into these concerns. And following their deliberations, two major outcomes were announced. By 2015, a significant amendment was made to the labeling of all testosterone products, highlighting that the long-term clinical safety of testosterone remains undetermined. The call for more extensive trials was clear, as conclusions regarding testosterone safety in relation to cardiovascular disease remained elusive. And so a significant directive from the FDA was a mandate for testosterone product manufacturers to undertake a comprehensive clinical trial to affirm the safety of testosterone. And this directive led to the initiation of the TRAVERSE trial in 2015. This placebo-controlled randomized investigation rolled over 5,200 men who were randomly assigned to either receive testosterone gel or placebo. Eligibility for the study required participants to have low testosterone levels below 300 nanograms per deciliter and to exhibit symptoms associated with the condition. All participants either had pre-existing cardiovascular disease or possess at least three out of eight cardiovascular risk factors, including hypertension, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. The trial commenced in May 2018 and concluded in February 2022, aiming to rigorously evaluate the safety of testosterone therapy. So, in the group of men treated with testosterone gel, their testosterone levels experienced an increase rising from approximately 148 nanograms per deciliter to reach about 400 nanograms per deciliter. Conversely, the placebo group saw a modest rise in testosterone levels, an increase of only 14 nanograms per deciliter. The pivotal takeaway from this study is the absence of any heightened risk for cardiovascular events associated with testosterone treatment. The second study focused on sexual health and enrolling over a thousand participants in the study comparing testosterone gel with the placebo. The main goal was to observe any increase in sexual activity with secondary objectives including enhancements in erectile function and libido. The findings indicated testosterone when used alone did not boost erectile function, a fact already acknowledged by the U. AUA, the American Urological Association guidelines. However, the study did reveal significant improvements in sexual activity and libido, with benefits to libido being maintained for up to 24 months, highlighting the positive impact on testosterone and sexual desire over an extended period. Then thirdly, a study on prostate cancer was published involving 5,200 men who were randomly assigned either testosterone gel or placebo. And the study primary focus was on the incidence of high-grade prostate cancer with secondary con- considerations given to the progression of urinary symptoms like we see in BPH. They used the IPSS scale. And they looked at the necessity for surgeries like TERP, which is the transurethral uh, resection of the prostate, and use of medication. The results showed no increase in the rate of high-grade prostate cancer 
with only a total of 23 ca cancer cases identified amongst 5,200 people, 11 in the placebo group and 12 in the testosterone group, indicating no significant difference. This study was a pioneer demonstrating there was no risk of aggravation of urinary symptoms, challenging the current warnings indicated on testosterone products about the potential worsening of urinary issues. This finding contraindicates previous concerns and suggests a reassessment of the risks associated with testosterone therapy in relation to urinary health. And the final study was a smaller scale study focusing on anemia, which is low blood cells, involving 815 participants. The study aimed to determine if testosterone supplementation could lead to an improvement in anemia. And after a period of six months, the results demonstrate a notable enhancement, a 41% improvement rate in patients receiving testosterone compared to a 27% improvement rate in the placebo group. While the concept of testosterone increasing red blood cells is not new and has been documented in other testosterone trials, this study leverages the, that effect for a positive outcome. The goal here was to aid individuals suffering from anemia, specifically those with a hemoglobin level below 127, by utilizing testosterone capacity to increase blood blood cell count. These studies do provide some reassurance to us that testosterone therapy does not elevate the risk of heart attacks or strokes or increase the risk of prostate cancer. With regards to sexual health, it doesn't appear that there's an improvement in erectile function, but there was an increase in libido. No doubt the two are tied hand in hand. And without libido, the result in erection will be impacted. Lastly, in those with anemia, low blood count. We do see an improvement in hemoglobin levels, which would probably improve the energy levels and give a sense of wellness. Some caveats that I would think are important that were not addressed here. The Traverse study was done on men who had low testosterone levels and had symptoms of low testosterone levels. They were treated with a testosterone gel, not injection, with the intention to bring them into the range of the normal physiologic range. The study used total testosterone rather than free testosterone as their measurement, and we do know that free testosterone provides a better accurate measurement of the testosterone that can actually be available to the tissues. So I think we need to be aware of this, but likely the results will hold in men who have a lowish testosterone, the type of people we see in our clinic, with some symptoms, or those who kind of want to get back to how they were feeling in their 20s and 30s. I hope you enjoyed. This is, the, again, a very important topic. Click the like button and subscribe and send me your thoughts. Take care.